Hello everybody, welcome back to Automation. My name is Marcus and today we will be continuing our Let's Play of Contera Motors in Light Campaign 4.1. Now, last episode we introduced a new model, the Aspiration, which launched Contera into the premium and luxury sedan markets. Today what I'd like to do, in addition to, of course, facelifting the second generation Dragonfly, is... Uh, add another trim of the Aspiration. I want to do a premium wagon variant, and then this is only a medium one factory, so I'd like to upgrade it to maybe a medium three. Uh, that's what I'd really like to do. We'll see how uh, in range that is in terms of cost and market sizes. But the other thing that I'd like to do is that I think with cars getting heavier, um, and our company expanding, it's high time to start thinking about creating a new engine. So what I want to do this uh, episode, which I don't think is something we did in our last playthrough, is create a new engine as a concept, and then on our next batch of cars, which should be coming somewhere around, uh, I don't know, 1970 or so, we'll facelift it into production, uh, into those new models. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to it. But for now, let's dive into uh, facelifting the first generation Aspiration and making that wagon variant. Right, and the first thing that we're going to do in this process is actually to update our engine. We are going to keep the Potomac in production just for now. I think this is probably going to be the final variation of the Potomac that we have in production. But uh, this is really useful because I think we're going to make the switch over to mechanical fuel injection on this facelift, which is a big upgrade in a lot of ways, but does have a pretty long engineering time when it first uh, gets facelifted in. So it's nice if you can facelift it onto an existing engine rather than having to start f like brand new fresh uh, with a bunch of other new work. So that uh, just makes it a little bit more manageable. And of course, I'm going to drop the quality down to just plus one as opposed to the plus four that we are running for our uh, four barrel carb that was on there before. Anything else that I want to change here? Um, we could go over to forged internals, but it's not really necessary, at least not for this uh, one. Uh, maybe on the uh, S64, the other variant that's more performance oriented, we'll have a need for the forged internals. And if we switch that one, we might as well switch this one too. But I'm going to hold off on it for now, and maybe we can save a buck. We can take a little bit more compression. Not quite that much. And maybe rev it just still just a little bit higher. All right, yeah, that looks all around pretty good. Should we open up the exhausts a little bit? Yeah, that looks good. 175 horsepower, that's very healthy for an engine this size and from this time period. Give it a quick listen. Ooh. It doesn't sound half bad. It is pretty heavy, weighing at 560 pounds. That's one of the things that we'll address with the new motor. Okay, uh, let's look over here for the body. Oh yes, we can switch over to a three-speed automatic, which is a big, big improvement. That two-speed slush box was really, really brutal, and I might just pop one point of quality into the transmission as well. Wheels, I think we'll stick with 175s. That seems adequate for now. Uh, brakes, oh, we can upgrade to uh, two piston discs in the front. I think that'll be worth it. And that'll allow us to go down to having some nice, comfortable brakes. We'll adjust the biasing a little bit there so we don't have any warnings. That looks really good. That's a nice, nice brake tuning. Okay, I don't think we want to make any changes over here. All the cooling, everything looks good. I don't think we need to add an under tray. This car doesn't have all that high of a top speed. Uh, interior, yep, I think we'll stick with that as is. We're still current for safety. Advanced 60s is the best we can have. And for suspension, um, oh, well, we have gas monotube dampers. That's a nice little improvement. Roll angle of seven. Uh, you know what? Actually, I'm okay with that. This is supposed to be a comfortable car anyway, uh, so that's just fine. Um, any other tuning tweaks I want to make here? I, I don't think there is. All right, that's looking really good. The only other change that I'm going to make here that I think I forgot to do last time for the luxury variant is actually just make this a four-seater. Uh, the luxury demographics like that a little bit better. Any other changes? Nope. I'm kind of tempted to go for a hydro-pneumatic suspension for the luxury variant. 
Um, let me do target the demographic and see. I'm not sure if I want to endeavor to put that much complexity on this car, though. Ooh. You know, it actually really, really helps the score to go with a hydro pneumatic suspension. So that actually might be what we do, because what the problem is is this thing is like super rating super affordable, but not all that competitive. Um, which means it's just not fancy enough. It's too cheap and. Hydro pneumatic suspension would be a really good way to address that. Okay. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, just clone this premium sedan variant and then we'll pop over to the wagon uh, body variant. Oh yes. Make a couple quick adjustments to the morphing here. I don't need it to be quite that big in the back. Actually, the taillights still look great. How do I like that? Oh, oh that, yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I guess we just need to fix this handle like so. Perfect. Awesome. That's a great looking wagon. I'm not really sure. Oh, not really sure what's going on there, but uh, yeah, we'll just we'll just keep rolling. <laughs> um, three speed automatic. Do we need to make any other changes? Well, I think we need to make the springs in the back just a little bit stiffer and the dampers as well. But other than that, this car looks just about perfect. Maybe we'll make the uh, it's a little bit more oversteery than this sedan, so what I'll do is I'll take the camber up just a little bit more in the rear, and then we'll make the front sway bar just a little bit stiffer. That'll also help bring the roll angle down a little bit. This is, of course, going to be targeting the family utility premium segment. Should be a nice market expansion to uh, in in increase our volume a little bit to justify the factory expansion that I'd like to put in. So this is looking very good. Just for kicks, let's see how fast this goes around the test track. It has that three-speed automatic in it now, so that should help a lot, actually. Not to mention it's slightly more powerful from the fuel injection. Two forty-four. Okay, that's actually not too bad. It still only weighs about twenty-eight hundred pounds, which is pretty darn light. Uh, you know by any standard i'm surprised by that well we'll just name this one the pw64 for premium wagon of course and i think that's going to wrap up our facelifts of the aspiration let's quickly run through the factory setup while we're here now how much is it going to cost me to switch up to a medium three actually not too much 226 million uh it's actually kind of reasonable and within reach for us like we're profitable I don't think we took out that big of a loan for our old factory and if we need to expand engine production we don't have to build another engine factory because I already accidentally bought one we can just tool that one to produce our engine um, let's see here all of this is looking very good okay maybe we'll put in a little bit more tooling quality up to 60 help our uh, build quality a little bit there our reputation is suffering just a little bit and that means we can take the QA threshold up a tiny bit yeah all right looking grand engineering time 28 months very reasonable but that's with the funding slider cranked all the way up so I'm gonna take that down to about 75 uh, tooling process. I'd actually like to take that up a tiny bit, maybe to 50, make the cars a little bit cheaper. And reliability is nice uh, for uh, for this segment. This is the, the segment where it'll, it'll help us to have some good reputation, especially if we want to expand down market later, which I think we will. And finally, I think I can back off some pressure here, maybe just to round it out to 48 months. That would be a really nice time to have this car out. All right, let's... Uh, Go ahead in here and also, well, hmm, that's asked me to do this factory setup. What I actually want to do is go right ahead and uh, just facelift the S58. It's going to get mechanical fuel injection. And this one, I'm actually going to give it a uh, per cylinder, the ITBs, individual throttle bodies. That helps with the throttle response. And I'm going to give it a performance intake. 
Next thing I want to do is take full advantage of the revs of this motor and actually maybe pop even one more quality point into the push rods. That nets us almost 200 horsepower before making any adjustments to compression. Ooh, can I eke this thing just up to 200? I bet I can. Oh yes. This is looking very, very good. I'm really happy with this figure. Nice, you know, meaty sort of mid-range torque band, around 200 horsepower up near the top. That's a really nice, that's a really nice figure for a 2.8 liter engine of this time. It looks so tall. It's kind of a funny looking uh, motor actually, like the intake manifold is like bigger than the engine itself, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, and we'll leave the factory management uh, for the engine for later for just a second. Uh, because what we'll do now is pop over to the Dragonfly 2 and pump out two new facelifts of this. We're already maxing out our small three factory for this uh, for this car, so there's not really much sense in introducing a new trim right now. First things first, we're going to facelift in our brand new S64. Nice power increase. Body, fixtures, everything here looking good. Ooh, we have unlocked a five-speed manual. That is excellent, excellent for this car. Uh, 7.4 seconds, 0 to 60. That's, that's pretty quick now. All of this looking good. I think we'll switch over to magnesium wheels. We'll lower the weight a little bit. That, that'll be helpful. Brakes, same thing. We'll go over to two pistons up front. That allows us to take the pad type down to something a little bit less aggressive. And then we can fiddle with the tuning. Front brake force is still high, but we can actually still lower that a little bit. Can we get rid of that warning? Probably not, but eh, that's okay. I'm okay with having that warning. I'd sooner have that than have bad brake frame, brake fade. Excuse me. Uh, we're already at one percent, one percent sportiness brake fade, so I don't really want to introduce more than that. Uh, but I'm prepared to tolerate that much. This car actually might benefit from a semi-clad under tray. It might. Yeah, that gives us a little bit more top speed. That's nice. Adds prestige. Uh, well, 0.1 prestige. It also makes the car a little more quiet, a little more comfortable, which is uh, all good things. Suspension tuning actually still looks perfect, except for the fact that I might want to have just a slightly stiffer front sway bar. Reduce that roll angle just a tiny bit. I guess we need one more in the re rear as well. That's okay. 5.8, that looks great. Let's run this thing around the test track, see how fast it gets around. I bet this is actually going to be pretty quick. Two thirty-five. That's not too bad at all. It's interesting. This car only weighs about what less than a hundred pounds less than the luxury sedan variant or the wagon variant of the aspiration like that just goes to show how heavy these space frame chassis are um i guess this is a four seater with the fancy schmancy interior too that doesn't help but still the weight penalty on the space frame and the ladder chassis is really significant okay run real quick through the same treatment here on the dragonfly convertible the only other thing I forgot I wanted to do on this uh, GT trim, and I'll do it for the convertible as well, is I forgot to switch the dampers over to gas monotube. Uh, it's a pretty small difference, but uh, that's nice. Those little bumps help. Um, that looks good. That's going to complete our facelift for the Dragonfly second generation. Convertible Sport just got the exact same series of upgrades as the GT car. Five-speed transmission, two-speed front drums, uh, adjustment of uh, suspension and uh, brake tuning, and, of course, the addition of a semi-clad under tray to help out. Let's go into the factory management. Uh, we're still going to be working with the small, small three factory for this one, but we can crank up our quality control and add in just a little bit more tooling quality. Take the funding down a little bit, because remember our target for this is going to be 48 months. We can take some pressure out, maybe run that at like a 30? We can take the funding way down on this one, actually. We have tons of breathing room here. And then we'll just put the rest in reliability. Actually, I'll put a little bit more into process. I'd like it for these cars to be somewhat cheap. Cheaper, anyway. 
Now we see if I need to incorporate uh, our uh, accident engine factory here. <laughs> Let's start with the Engine Factory 3. I think this is the one that we had producing our, uh, yes, our B-58 variant. Uh, this time the B-64. Uh, okay, all this looking good. We probably can do a Medium 1 factory still powering a Medium 3. I think that should be completely fine. Just eke up the QA threshold, eke up the tooling quality a little bit. Looking very good. Engine factory number one, the original. Just tweak the QA threshold a little bit. I don't think any other changes are necessary there. And now the engineering time. Whoo! 109 months. That's a long one. But we can crank our funding up. We'll go up to 90. I don't want to spend too, too much money. And then we can put the pressure slider back up at 50. I'd like to leave automation uh, tooling where it is at 30. That... Uh, I don't want to go below what the other small factory has. We could take some out of process, though. I, I don't mind if the motor gets a little bit more expensive, because our cars are going to be cheaper. And I guess we just have to drop the rest out of reliability. How far do I have to run this slider to get it at 48 months? That was ambitious. I guess we'll just run funding all the way up at 100. Whew, okay. Uh, that's an aggressive setup. What I'll do, I'm going to take a little bit more out of process. I'm going to drop five out of tooling, and then I'll put a little bit back into reliability. Okay, that at least lets us get it somewhat more reasonable. Can I just... Yes. Okay. Um, all right. This is a little bit of a wonky setup, but that's what we'll have to do to get this engine out timely. I don't want to stretch these facelifts out to 60 months because then we'll just be wasting time on our cars. And we're still in the premium segments, and the upgrade to mechanical fuel injection will give us enough of a bump to reliability in and of itself that I think that'll offset our running this slider uh, uh, down so far. Hmm. Okay, we are overworking our engine factories just a little bit, so I guess I am going to have to call in this accidental factory. We'll drop the tooling down to 30. We'll leave the tooling quality at 50, bring the QA threshold down, worker wages up by 10%. I think that's what we were doing. That one can produce both trims. A medium factory shouldn't have any issue with that. Okay, there we go. Now we have plenty of surplus. Now it's time to look at pricing for this model. Now I'm pretty sure... Our old model, we're overselling. I'm going to have to go back and adjust the pricing on that. Hopefully we can. Um, this one, I'm going to try to sell it at $28,000. We're selling our current one at twenty-five, dollars and we can't keep up with the, the orders. So we'll raise the price on this a little bit. All right. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be very profitable. Looking good. We need to do the pricing for our aspiration as well. That's okay. Uh, hmm. Premium sedan. Wow. That's now we're producing that for twelve grand. And uh, oh, why is that targeting the premium budget segment? Oh, that's frustrating. That's okay. Uh, I think what we'll do here, because this one really should be targeting premium segment. What's our budget for that? Ah, budget spread. There it is. Okay, the premium budget is actually 27 grand, so we could sell this thing for like 20 grand, and that would still leave our dealerships plenty of margin to make money. Luxury sedan can be even more expensive. We can sell that. I want to sell it for the same as the GT car. I'm going to sell it for 28k. And then the premium wagon, I think, has to be a little bit cheaper despite actually being somewhat more expensive to produce because this, uh, the budget is smaller. Let's try to sell it for 19 and see how that looks. All right, that's looking pretty darn good overall. Selling mostly premium sedans, which is just fine. That's what I want. Nice uh, amount of high margin luxuries. And then this one here should sell a decent volume. And the markup isn't quite as aggressive, but it's still darn good. 50% uh, markup is still very, very healthy. Let's sign these off. See what the total cost is. 350 million. Okay. Uh, that's 
ah, I'm okay with that. That's actually within reach for us. We're going to have to come up with that in like 48 months though. So that is tight. And I have 133 million in the bank. Uh, so how much would I need to borrow to cover this? I, I need to borrow about 220 million. So, and we'll, we'll actually just borrow about 200 million because we'll be making money to pay for the engineering as this goes along. So well, I, I like to borrow somewhat conservatively. The debt, the debt, the interest charges can pile up pretty easily in this game. I've run a couple companies into the ground by borrowing too aggressively. And our current payment is 40, 4 million a month, which we're making uh, comfortably and still taking 10 million profit. Granted, this is while we're paying down those big orders, order queues that we have for our existing facelifts. But still, again, drawing that loan term out also increases the cost over time. So I'm going to run it pretty aggressively at 36 months payback, just shy of $6 million a month. That way we can clear that debt out pretty quickly and then be back in a stable financial position. Let's sign these babies off. I think that's going to call it a day. Now what I'd like to do is, uh, as I mentioned before, create an engine concept that we're going to use as the basis for the engine that we're going to facelift into production uh, on the next episode when we introduce a few new models. What I'd like to do here is make the engine a little bit bigger because displacement is part of the muscle car score. I'm going to stick with the 90 degree V8 because I think it's a nice well-rounded package for our application. And then the debate here is do I want to stick with a cast iron block for now? Have the engine a little bit heavier but not have to buy those aluminum factories? Um, that, and it would be more reliable as well. Uh, but the aluminum does save a lot of weight. I think I'm going to swing for the aluminum foundries, and we don't have to buy them this episode. We'll just have to buy them next episode. Those are quite an investment, but uh, I, I think I'm okay with it. Um, yeah, because we'll, uh, the weight benefit's really big. The other thing that I'm going to introduce to this engine as a concept is overhead cams. We're going to retire those push rods. They worked well enough in the beginning, but uh, I want to be able to rev this engine a little bit more. So we'll go for uh, overhead cam two valve to give it a little bit more breathing room. And the fact that we're doing aluminum block and heads is going to offset the, uh, the added weight penalty from that a little bit. Uh, it still, I think, should be a lighter motor than, than our old one. The other thing I'm going to do, we're going to make this a larger displacement than the old one. Cars are getting heavier and we need more power. I think 4.2 liters is going to work really well. It's slightly under square. Uh, this engine's supposed to rev a little bit more, so it's not as under square as the other one. It needs to spin a little bit to, to get some power. Um, okay, that looks like a good block design. Let's keep moving right along. Still going to be a cross-plane type. We're not going to go flat plane or anything like that. Um, do I want forged steel? Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to engineer it with forged internals so that if I want to and I can afford to get those forge works on the next uh, set of uh, factory upgrades, I can. If I can't, we already have plenty of familiarity in cast parts, so I can always just deconvert to those and adjust the engine accordingly. Uh, that's what we'll do. We'll leave everything like here pretty stock for now because uh, this is just a concept, not going into production, so none of what's going on there really matters. We'll build it just like we would uh, for uh, in terms of fueling system. Good familiarity to gain there, and this will make the facelift of it next time around pretty quick. We'll put some exhaust in it. We'll go tubular headers, dual exhaust with twin reverse flows, just like we were doing before. Engine has failed due to valve float. Uh-oh. Okay. 6,000 RPMs, a little bit ambitious. 5,500 is not. What are we doing on our current engine? I think we're doing about 5,500, yeah? At 200 horsepower. Wow, interesting. It's the exact same power as the old one. All these improvements and uh, the exact same power. 100 pounds lighter, though, so even then it's an improvement. What can we do to tune this a little bit to get a feel for what kind of power I can actually expect out of this motor? For one, we can make the cam profile more aggressive. That gets us 10 horsepower. And then we can rev it out a little higher. The forged internals on this will rev out to 6200 just for kicks. Let's see what the cast would do. 
Yeah, 5,700, not great. But we could probably quality some of that out to where it's acceptable. And not really. It would take plus four just to get it to 5,800. Yeah. We'll engineer it with the forge parts for now. Make the exhaust a little bit bigger. Okay. 213 horsepower. It's a lot lighter. Engineering time is actually still somewhat reasonable, so that's good, I guess. Still has that really tall stack on top. All right, let's go ahead and do the engineering work for this. Uh, we're going to target 48 months on this one as well, which is going to be ambitious. But uh, we can take the tooling way down to, like, 10. We can take the process way down to, like, 10, because we don't care about these sliders, because it's not going into production. We can put a little bit more funding in, because we're actually not spending that much on it. Put in a little bit more pressure, because reliability doesn't count. And drop a little bit out of reliability to make up the difference. Hmm. Very, very good. And yes, yes, it's a concept. Oh, I almost forgot to name it. Let's go back in here. I want to call this engine the Excelsior. 4.2 and this is going to be the X for experimental 64 and of course no factory production to fiddle with 48 months 20 million bucks pretty cheap let's sign it right off we don't need to take a loan for this either that will just bake right in all right perfect this coming out in early 1968 Let's take a quick peek at the tech tree, and if there's anything I want to rush here, well, a uh, hyper eutectic cast might be worth it. We'll pop two points into that. In line five, we don't really need that, um, but we'll leave the one point in engine architecture, because that's a nice buff. Straight through exhaust, probably not necessary. Hidden auto soft top, we already have plus one point in body tech. We might want more, though, because we are going to be doing new bodies at that point. We'll put two into wheel quality so we can get alloy wheels. Those are a nice balance between weight and cost. Brakes, I think we're adequately braked for now. Automatic four would be nice, but 68 to 75 is a bit of a reach. Uh, I don't want to run those quite that aggressively. We're not that big of a company yet. And, uh, ooh, interior and safety. These would both be nice to have. A luxury 8-track and advanced 70s. We can get a two-year head start on both of those and get it out on the, that model. That should be hitting the market probably 74, 75-ish. That would be really, really nice. And uh, I guess the last thing to take a look at would be our body selection. Any bodies that we want to rush. Um, let's see. Hmm. Well, in 1970, we unlocked these vans. We could make a luxury van, I suppose. Hmm. This actually is very intriguing. This could be a good candidate for the muscle car body. Two seat rows. It's a little bit on the shorter side. That might work. It's also not a bad candidate for the GT car body either, come to think of it. Yeah, and for body tech, there are a couple bodies that unlock in 1970. I am going to just pop two quality points into there so we can use 1970 bodies when we want to design these cars in most probably 1968. I think that's going to take care of our tech pool. Let's drop back. Any marketing we want to do? Hmm. We're not really doing much. Let's invest a little bit into comfort and a little bit more into prestige. We'll do this and we'll just spread that around to all of our countries. We're profitable and these aren't that big of an increase in cost so that should help a little bit just to increase our market awareness. We are expanding that factory, and I do worry sometimes when I do these factory expansions, it's always a little bit of a nail-biter of like, oh, are we going to have too much capacity? Now, that being said, I think we're ready to hit play here. We'll have to keep an eye on these stock numbers as we move forward and uh, adjust them accordingly, depending on if they're going bigger or, bigger or lower. Uh, I want to be able to ideally because we have a little bit of a construction time here, about a year. I'd actually like to build up some stock in our premium sedans so that we can keep selling models uh, while, uh, while, we're, while, while that factory is under construction. But let's hit play and see how it looks. All right, after a couple of ticks, it looks like these stock numbers here are going the wrong direction entirely. 
So we need to raise these prices. Oh, oh, maybe we maybe we can't. Oops. <laughs> well, I guess let's try typing. Try typing it in. I'd like to go for 28k. Can that be done? Let's do the same down here. Uh, and hit accept and see if that works. Ooh. No, it doesn't work. Okay, well, we're stuck with the price on that one at 25k. I guess you can't adjust the prices after you do a facelift. Oops. Um, uh, but uh, this one here is doing okay, and it's at least moving in the right direction. We'll probably at least be close to zero by the time these cars come into production. We're still profitable. We're still making money, so not the end of the world. We'll just hit play and keep moving right along. All right, exciting. We are a couple months into sales of our new models. I think just two months. We're taking up our factory capacity on the Aspiration 1 very, very nicely, uh, selling quite profitably, and we are... We can't even make enough dragonflies. We're already more than a year in negative stock. Uh, we had to, unfortunately, cancel a lot of orders for the old model. You can see here the uh, this big spike in expenses. That was the... Uh, uh, when that model went out of production, that was us having to give everybody their deposit back because we couldn't make the delivery because we needed to introduce a new car and the factory is not big enough. It makes me wonder if... Uh, I haven't done this before, but it makes me wonder if we shouldn't just buy another small factory to produce this dragonfly. Although that doesn't really make sense. I suppose it would make more sense just to produce the space frame in a medium factory for now and, you know, when the time comes... We can move the uh, small factory onto like a luxury, what is that, like the luxury premium, like the, the $300,000 sedan market or whatever it is, <laughs> something that is really, really that small. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to export the uh, the wagon over to BeamNG Drive. We'll take it for a spin, see how it handles, um, and uh, I'll see you guys over there. All right, everybody, we're back in BeamNG Drive with the premium wagon version of the... Uh, Aspiration 1. It still has that awkward little vent in the uh, front of the hood there. I don't really know what's going on there, but it doesn't seem to affect anything. No matter. Let's uh, let's take it for a spin and see how it feels. Already you can tell a huge, huge difference uh, between the uh, three-speed auto and the two-speed auto. It's just absolute night and day in terms of how quick and athletic this car feels. It seems strange to call a station wagon with like buttery soft suspension athletic but it's actually pretty quick with the amount of power it has it's 175 horsepower in like a 2800 pound car that ain't bad uh even for today that ain't bad um that's <laughs> a lot of cars today don't even have that power weight ratio uh and back then that would have been quite impressive a lot of that is lost to that automatic but the gearing is at least a lot better than it was with that two speed we, we just could barely use it car brakes a lot better too. Um, it just stops with a lot more confidence and makes the whole thing a lot more drivable. And I don't know, I find the wagon variant to be strangely handsome. This is still a very nice handling car, at least out here on this road. It feels nice and controllable, but yet nimble enough to get through the corners without really having to brake too, too hard. You can steer it with the throttle when you need to. Just an absolute pleasure. Um, and that three-speed automatic again. Oh, what a difference in how this car feels. Really, really, really nice. I think that's going to wrap it up for today's episode, everybody. What I'd like to do next time is introduce, obviously, new models to replace uh, this luxury sedan and our Dragonfly, but I want to do one more model. A lot of people have been asking for a muscle car, and I'd really like to satisfy that request because I think it would be a lot of fun. I'm not sure if we'll do it as a variant of the Aspiration Generation 2 or as a separate model altogether, but we'll implement our new engine block. That's going to have some manufacturing costs and then we'll introduce that as well. As always, thank you guys all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.